Well, hello, hello, hello. So we're going to start at noon. My name is Angela Odom. And of course, I'm here representing uh, all the leaders in the house today. I thought that was funny. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to uh, come on in, come on in, come on in. And to go ahead and share this um, Better You Leadership um, session with your uh, friends and family and your co-workers, people, uh, women, really, women leaders who you would expect to gain some benefit from this. So I'm here every Tuesday at noon sharing information with you. So we're going to start at noon, just uh, sign on a few minutes early so you can come on in, come on in, come on in, right? Go ahead and get your notebook out. This is going to be really good. Get your notebook out, your binder, your journal, um, you know, for me, I like to have, uh, let me see, I like to have pencil and paper, right? Pencil and paper is what I like. But you can use your uh, phone, uh, any of those digital devices. We've got a million ways to take notes. You want to uh, go ahead and get yourself prepared, right? Eliminate distractions. This is your time and I'm here just for you. So, just go ahead and get yourself all situated. And we're going to take about 30 minutes, right? So you want to go ahead and clear your mind and be prepared to uh, pour in you, to yourself. That's what we do. We invest in our mindset, right? Our skill set and our network. And this is your opportunity to do so. We're going to start at noon. So we got one more minute. Go ahead and get yourself together, get some notes and this, again, uh, is all about better you. It's all about you. That's what we're doing today. So we have about a minute and then we'll get started. So come on in into the chat. And let me know uh, where you are um, coming in from, where you're coming in from, where you are um, joining us in the chat. Say your name and where you're joining us from. Uh, go ahead. And of course, it's noon and let's get started. So today uh, we will focus on communications. We're going to discuss um, communication. I'll provide you with an overview, the definition of process itself, and then what, why, and how leaders communicate. What leaders communicate, why leaders communicate, and how leaders communicate. That's what we're doing today. That's what we're doing today. And so we want to start by um, just sharing the fact that communication is a core leadership function and it's closely aligned with effective leadership. There's just no escape from growing your communication skills. Every single relationship requires skilled communicators. Whether we're in a casual group, formal organizations or within communities, Leaders are expected, you're expected to express your ideas and share information with various audiences, whether it's your bosses, your peers, your employees, or people who are your direct reports, customers, partners, stakeholders, and influencers. You're expected to be able to um, express yourself and to share information. My name is Angela Odom. I am a life and leadership coach. I teach women how to um, grow their skills in their leadership capacity. I'm also a, an amazingly proud Army veteran, and I am here to share with you every single week uh, one topic, you know, something that's going to help you, to benefit you. So get your uh, notebook out, your pencil, pad, pen, a digital device, whatever you need to do. And go ahead and just tell us where you are joining us from as we get started. All right, Sam. Whoa, Sam, how you doing? I see you. And uh, okay, Natona, all the way from Hawaii, I see you. It's early for you, right? And Carrie, oh my God, you're. I know it's cold, icy cold northern Minnesota where my car won't start. Oh my God. Okay. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Well, let, let's get started, y'all. Let's get started with communications. Just talk about for a minute uh, the definition, right? So what are we talking about? So communication is uh, giving, receiving, or exchanging ideas, 
It could be exchanging ideas, information, signals, or even messages. And we, we just ended um, Valentine's Day. You might have been exchanging winks, you know, messages and signals. So um, communication is giving, receiving, or exchanging ideas, information, signals, or messages through an appropriate media, which, what does that do? That enables individuals, you and I, or either groups to persuade, to seek information, to give information, or to express emotions. That's a large way of saying it is, uh, I'm gonna get my, um, I'm gonna give you a message and I'm, I'm going to receive something from you. That's what we're doing, right? That's what that is. And you got a different uh, definition and put it in the chat, right? Bottom line is we're giving and receiving. And sometimes it's one way. <laughs> sometimes it's one way. It might be, I mean, like if I'm watching, uh, one of these shows, these TV shows, or I'm a news junkie, then that's one way communication, right? And so where do we start with this? Uh, this is, uh, we're going to use today, I'm going to share with you the uh, Shannon, Shannon and Weaver, Weaver, I always mess that up, Weaver model. It's a model of communication. It started out being a mathematical theory. And, and so this guy was... Um, Claude Shannon was actually born, I think, like 1916 or something like that. And uh, this was, uh, he was a mathematician and he was working with uh, Bell Labs, you know, the telephone company, right? Um, and the bottom line, what he was doing was he was developing concepts for us to use the telephone when it was the black dial, not this, not this fancy uh, iPhones and uh, Androids, all these things. So this was way back. So what he did was he broke down um, communication, the way humans communicate into six key concepts. And I just want to stop for a second. So whenever you are uh, discussing a topic with someone, start with the definition, like and use your sources where you got that from, um, because you just want to come and be transparent. So I'm going to talk to you uh, briefly about the six key components, these concepts, sender, encoder, uh, channel, noise, decoder, and receiver. And then um, a later version of this same theory um, added uh, the concept of feedback, right? And so that first concept was linear and later adding feedback made it cyclical, right? which means you're getting feedback. It's not just one way. It's not just you uh, talking to someone. You get some feedback and then, you know, it is almost a conversation. <laughs> so let's go quickly into the process itself. Let's go into the process of communication itself. And I told you to get some notes, right? Make sure you have your binder or something or your, your nice uh, phone or something uh, so you can take some notes. You want to be clear. Remember, um, I don't know about you, but I think I might have been in elementary school or maybe, I don't know if it was, we used to call it junior high, not middle school, but uh, you know, your teacher would have one person on one end to start a message and then it would go through um, you know, six or seven other children. And by the time it came to the end of that message, it was totally different, right? So you start on one end and you go through and you might've been saying, um, Angela has on a red blouse. You start it there. And then as it goes over, and the message is communicated from person to person, from person to person at the end, the last person might say something like, there was a purple duck walking across the yard. <laughs> you remember that, right? Or is that just me? I'm getting, oh, what's it? Uh, okay. Hi, I'm getting ready to retire. Woohoo! hey, Mary Lou. Oh, Mary Lou and I, uh, Mary Lou Hall, and I uh, served together in the army. I am so proud of you. This is beautiful. So you know definitely about communication. So we'll go back to um, the communication process. So sender, that's the person who is delivering a message to the recipient, right? Then encoder, that's number two, the transmitter. So this refers to the information that the sender is relaying. I just told you, uh, you know, about the the scenario with the kids starting at one end and uh, each one of the kids would transmit the message. So 
So that's what we're relaying. Then a channel of communication, like the the this is the transmission or method of delivering the message, right? And then the noise. So noise could be just that noise. It could literally be noise in the background. It could be uh, something that's, um, you know, if you're sending that message, and right now you probably have to have your mask on, <laughs> but if you're sending that message, that would be noise, the muffled sound. And then it is decoding. This is the interpretation of the message. Decoding is performed by the receiver, right? So that second person that the message is um, provided to, they are decoding. Then, of course, the receiver. And then, of course, feedback, right? And so really quickly, just, just for that process, I am clearly... Uh, interested in knowing if you all played that same game as I did when I was a little girl, right? Um, you know, you would pass the message one after the other, and about the end of the uh, end of the message passing, then it would be totally different. Just put that in the, in the uh, chat for me, or if that was just my scenario in Mississippi, we only did it in Mississippi. Maybe that's it, Carol. I don't know if y'all did that in Minnesota or not. So we talked about the process, right? The definition and the process, and then we want to know well, what. Are leaders communicating? Leaders are communicating vision, strategy, and goals. Vision, strategy, and goals. And then why? Why are leaders communicating? We're communicating for uh, to gain um, organizational effectiveness. That's what we're doing, right? So we're inspiring others. Uh, we're building connections between people and creating alignment throughout the organization. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And then how do we communicate? How do we communicate? Um, so in your, uh, in the chat, just go ahead and tell me like, how do you communicate? I'm going to, I actually, um, I'm just going to take from an article I read, an online Harvard Business School article titled Essential Communication Skills for Leaders. So it's a 2019 article. I think it's still applicable. And I wanted to share with you the, um, the few things they listed as essential, right? And so one is the ability to adapt your communication style, active listening, transparency, clarity, ability to ask open-ended questions. I'm going to give you a tool for that, a technique. And then empathy, open body language, and receiving and implementing feedback. So number one, uh, the ability to adapt your communication style. You know, first, the very first thing you have to do is you have to be able to understand, um, you have to be able to understand your own leadership style, right? That way you'll be, you're able to understand uh, how you're interacting with folks and then how they're perceiving you. So that's two different things. You're interacting with people and how do you actually, per you're perceived. Um, and you know, you want to know how you show up in other people's eyes. For example, if you are a laissez-faire leader, if that's your leadership style, then you likely have an expectation uh, for others to manage to manage themselves, right? And you want them to be invested in completing tasks because you're kind of hands off. And this works uh, best when you know people have experience, they're technical experts, and of course they are invested in completing tasks on their own or within their own group. If they've been working uh, together for a long period of time, this would most likely work, right? However, it's not going to work for everyone. It might not go over well with everyone. So every employee has different motivations. So you want to tailor your communication um, to influence others and then reach organizational goals. So that's just one example. So you want to have the ability to adapt your leadership styles. And so what are we talking about at this phase, right? We're talking about how leaders communicate. And so what I just said to you, I want to go right back to that. First, understand your own leadership style and then be able to adapt to the people who are perceiving you one way or the other. You want to be able to be very aware of how you are showing up so that you may be able to get some results. Right. And I'm going to just back up right here because. Um, OK, Sam. Uh -huh, Sam says he remember, he's going back to the. Uh, the uh, the game, uh, the technique of sharing information, passing information from person to person to person. And then um, going back here to uh, 
uh, Carrie says she remember, but not sure it was in childhood as much as, oh, a corporate setting. Okay. Might've been a team building activity. And then um, Mary Lou says writing, listening and responding, chatting, showing up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hey, Mo, I see you. I see you. So let's stay focused uh, here on um, how leaders communicate. We just talked about the ability to adapt your communication style. Now let's go to active listening. You know, if you're talking to somebody and they're, uh, they're on their phone and, and they're not even looking up at you, and that is whether they have their mask on or not, right? We're in this uh, global pandemic, but now we do a whole bunch of things, a lot of interacting virtually. And so it's the same. It's, you want people to uh, feel like they are heard. So uh, the thing, uh, effective leaders know when, to, when you need to talk, when you need to shut your big old mouth, right? Which is more important because you need to listen. You need to listen more than you talk. That's Angie Odom's uh, um, number one. Listen more than you talk, right? That's what I've learned. That's my number one lesson um, after I got out of the military. <laughs> So you want to show people that you are actually uh, that you actually value their opinions, their ideas, and their feedback, and uh, you want to know uh, when it's appropriate to you know to share. You want to be able to actively engage in the conversation. You're posing questions. You're inviting them to elaborate, and then you yourself are taking notes. Like, hold up, wait a minute. What did you just say? Let me get something to write. I, I want to take that down. Right? You want to make sure you do that, or you might uh, dictate. Uh, in your phone at that time. Hold up, let me get that down right now. When you're talking to people, right? Those are ways to show that you're act actively listening. So it's important, uh, you know, that you stay in the moment. And, you know, not only in a corporate uh, environment. I mean, I do this with my favorite teenager. <laughs> I have to avoid in interrupting him. And so you want to avoid interrupting. Unless the person is just going on and on and on, you know, have discernment. So bottom line is focus on that person, that employee, that teammate, and you want to eliminate distractions, especially if you've called a meeting or you are doing a one-on-one, -on -one, or even if they've caught you as you're walking through the hallways, or if you are leading or facilitating uh, virtually, you're in breakout rooms, you want to eliminate uh, distractions. And then it could be as simple as for me, you know, putting a do not disturb on your phone really quickly as you're talking to people. And you want to, cause that thing might be ping, ping, ping as uh, people are texting or emailing you. So active listening, active listening. So what about you? Are you, are you an active listener? I mean, tell the truth. <laughs> are you, are you an active listener or are you only active listener for the people you like or you respect, right? I don't know, quick question, right? So the next thing would be transparency, transparency. So we just talked about um, the ability to adapt your communication style, then active listening. And now let's talk about transparency. So when you're speaking uh, openly about the company's goals, opportunities, and challenges, this is how you build trust, right? Because you're telling people, hey, this is the goals of the company, this organization. These are some things, opportunities uh, that are coming up. These are some challenges that we're facing. And then people are like, oh, okay, you know, okay, how, what's my role? How can I, how can I feel empowered to, you know, get in and help? You know, I want to, I want to be a part of the solution. And you want to, you know, you want to acknowledge mistakes as they are appropriate to not acknowledge, right? And just have discernment and maturity in that. But the bottom line is, every single person should understand their role that they play in your company's success. The more transparent you are. Um, the easier your team uh, is able to make a connection with you. So be transparent when it's appropriate, right? <laughs> when it's appropriate, I'm telling you, be uh, just have discernment. And then the, the next thing is clarity, clarity. So when you are uh, communicating with your teammates, with your employees, with your bosses, you want to speak in specifics, right? You want to uh, define the desired result of a product, uh, project or strategic initi initiative. Just be clear about, uh, you know, what you see success as. Be very clear on that. Um, and then when the goals are met, you want to share that, that the goals are met. And you want to, uh, sometimes you can name people that actually did things and sometimes you don't. You have to have discernment 
on when to go, you know, be that granular. But you want to be clear in it. You know, of course, the clearer you are, the less confusion uh, they'll have around priorities. And so what does that mean? You're like, you're probably thinking right now, like, wait a minute. Um, my boss is not that clear. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing and where we're going to achieve success. So you be the person that's clear, uh, that defines clarity. Be that person, right? And then you want to uh, the ability to ask open-ended questions. The ability to ask open-ended questions. This is why I told you I was going to share a technique with you. So if you want to uh, really understand your employees' motivations, your thoughts, their goals, um, you might want to just practice asking open-ended questions. Um, there is uh, one method is using TEDT, right? And this is uh, from, um, who is this? I think this is Jennifer Currents, who is the president uh, of uh, a consulting firm. I think it's a Currents Group by her name, right? Uh, so she was she was talking about using the acronym TEDT, and which stands for um, Tell Me More. So this is about the ability to op to ask open ended questions. T E D T. Tell me more. E. Explain what you mean. D. Define that term or concept for me. That's I like that. I really like that. What do you think of Ted? Tell me what you think of Ted. So when you leverage those phrases, you actually you know shut your big old mouth and listen, right? And then you can um, gain more thoughtful, thorough responses. And you know you are uh, you're probably going to learn more by doing that. And then the next thing is empathy, empathy. So you know there's so much that people will share with you when they show up. You're seeing like only like a small portion of their whole life, right? And so you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, people are carrying a big burden most of the time, and they're not sharing it with you. So you want to treat people with respect, right, and dignity. You want to have empathy for uh, situations and circumstances they might find themselves in. Now, I'm not saying lower any standards. I'm saying have empathy, which means uh, the, the tone and the way you communicate. That's what I'm saying. So you can uh, feel how they might uh, be struggling in other areas, right? And then you want to have open body language. So when you're communicating, it's not just what you say, right? It's how you carry yourself. It's, um, you know, some nonverbal cues. You might be talking to somebody and you might be, um, you know, like, got your hands doing like this because you're like, there's something in here. <laughs> and they're like, okay, there's something going on with this crazy lady right here. Or you might have your fits, uh, your fits clenched, right? Or, you know, have your eyebrows uh, furled like this. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's not the right message. So now this person is distracted because they don't know what's going on with you, how you're receiving them, right? So instead of doing all that, just make eye contact. And you want to establish rapport. And you smile. Like, uh, that conveys warmth and trust, right? Yeah, smile. I can feel your smiles right now. <laughs> And then uh, eighth and the final one is receiving and, impl receiving and implementing feedback. So as you are communicating, you want to get feedback. You want to know if your message, the way you intend it to be conveyed, is actually received that way. And then as uh, you are talking or texting or chatting or um, winking, whatever it might be, high-fiving, you want to get feedback on to how the other person, the, the entire group, is receiving the message so that you move far, uh, closer to um, your organization's goals. Because that's what you're doing, right? You're gaining more money, customers, influence for your organization, for your team. You are achieving results. That's what you're doing. You are um, communicating as a leader because you are seeking results. That's what you're doing. Um, and so you might be representing an organization. So you want to make sure that you are communicating effectively. <laughs> so what we do today, what do we do today? We actually, um, we discussed communications, the definition, the process, 
We looked at what leaders um, uh, communicate, why leaders communicate, and then how leaders communicate. So leaders who communi communicate effectively, well, we can expect that they're the ones that's actually going to get the results. How cool is that? How cool is that? And so that brings us really to the end of yet another session of, um, you know, Better You. I want to go back up and make sure I look at these comments because they are coming in. And so um, here's Carrie says, it drives me crazy to be talking to someone and you can tell they are distracted, maybe multitasking. Yes, Carrie, I definitely uh, agree with that. And then uh, Mo says, uh, eye contact is so important to me. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, Sam, um, okay, Sam says he's working on active listening, uh, listening without determining right or wrong, listening to learn. Woo, look at you being all open-minded. I like that, Sam. And then uh, Mo goes back said, I had to learn to be an active listener. I have not always been an active listener. I used to listen to respond. That's right. What she say? What he say? <laughs> no, I know, I know. And so you are not alone in that mode, and it is okay. Uh, okay, Mary Lou says such an important topic, and then easy to think you are uh, good at it, but are we really? I'm saying right. Um, have to work on it definitely. Okay, so that's where we are um, at the end of our uh, topic on communication, and so. So now, so I've shared all this with you and, and I already know that you knew this, right? I just put it in a package and delivered it to you, right? And so now what do you need to do? I told you to get your notes out. And so wherever you see some gaps, then that's where you go and um, grow your leadership, your communication skills, right? You could do various things. Get yourself a mentor, uh, talk to someone directly. You can look at how you are perceived, might want to do some um, reading. Uh, you could actually just practice, right? Write it down, go and figure out, okay, let me just, let me focus on being um, present when I am talking to people. That would be a big one right there. And then, oh, by the way, your tone and uh, understanding whether or not you are um, that your message is actually being received. Just ask some follow-up questions. I like that whole TED um, technique that I provided with, to, to you. So try that. So that's what you do next. You're like, well, what happens next? That was really good. That's what you do next. And then, oh, by the way, I want to invite you to attend the next round of uh, women's our women's uh, three-hour leadership intensive. It's on March 13th. It's uh, from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and so you just go to AngelaOdom.com and sign up. It's just that simple, right? We'll see you then. And uh, until the next time, of course, again, my name is Angela Odom. I'm a life and leadership coach, founder of the Better You Project brand. I teach women how to build their skills and their leadership capacity. And I'm also a very proud Army veteran. And so with that said, um, my name is Angela, and I am always, always rooting for you. You all have a magnificent day. And go out and, um, and let's see how uh, you are effectively communicating today. Take care.